Hello, and welcome to Andrew Broussard Watercolors. Today, we're going to do a fast and loose tonalist watercolor landscape painting. I'm going to use a quarter sheet of Stonehenge Aqua, 140 pound, cold press, and I just um, saturated with water. So we're going to jump right into it. I'm going to use the medium hate brush to paint with. All right. Uh, with this one, my main thought today with going into anything with this is exploring just that tonalist sunset and attempting to achieve it with watercolor. It's something that I battle with quite frequently. Um, and I'll kind of just throw some ideas out there and just experiment. What I'm using is raw sienna and yellow ochre. And I think a lot of those glowing sun sunsets of the um, late 1800s, I wonder if they were using the cadmium colors in order to achieve that. I don't have any cadmium colors. And plus it was done in oils. Um, I don't have any cadmium colors. Plus the cadmiums that I have are just cadmium use. Just the synthetics, just the mixtures for it. Plus for me, I just never get it to feel right. So I'm going to experiment with um, the, the earth pigments and see what happens there. So yellow ochre. Uh, raw sienna, and here is uh, some light red. Oxide. The scene is imaginary, but it might loosely be based off of um, a photo that Matthew Clemens had sent me earlier today. He was out and about uh, walking his dog. This is some raw umber right there. And yeah, it just had that classic feel to it. I think that's why he had sent it. And also, you know, he's out walking his dog and um, the scene was just a classic scene. A part of me is thinking maybe working with some lamp black or phthalo blue, mainly to um, darken, unless I go with my raw umber. So a lot of it's just uh, speculation and experimentation. In fact, here's the raw umber to start putting in the background, tree line. down here yeah I want something to essentially mute my colors let's see what happens with um lamp black the lamp black is really close to the yellow ochre that I put on the palette so those two are gonna mix and probably get a greenish type tint but I'm okay with that I have the paper towel in my other hand and I'll just go back and forth and create textures and just essentially just push values in different directions. The last video I put up was playing with um, the Van Dyke Brown and I think I named it something like really a dramatic um, just having a lot of fun with the titles of the video. A, a lot of people post those really um, weird videos, like the one ultimate thing to learn about painting or things like that. And I was just having fun with that. I might do that with this one too. It'd be like, you'll never believe what color this artist used in his painting. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed that and hope you've been having fun with them. It's, um, winter break down here so I've had time to kind of relax and recharge the the internal batteries 
I'm going to storm the clouds over that uh, yellow, earth yellow background. I do have some of the um, water soluble oils that are dry, drying, and soon I'm going to play around with the uh, glazes on top of those. And that should have some really good video content. Of course, you know, you're always welcome to follow along with these videos. I have tons up on YouTube. You're welcome to sign your own name to anything that you do when you follow along. And you have my express permission to uh, sell anything you do whenever you follow along with one of these tutorials. I want you all to be successful and to have fun. And uh, if you want to support this channel, I have the Patreon down below with a whole bunch of exclusive stuff. Speaking of being successful and having fun, on a, but on a sad note, um, uh, it turns out that Frankie Car Clark uh, passed away. Um, there was some stuff floating around earlier in the year that he had passed or not way or not. Um, he had not, and and then now it's in the news that within the past twenty four hours he has passed away. So unfortunately, um, that's the case. But you know he was huge in um, in Europe, and he had uh, the simply painting. I believe was the title uh, because there's tons of it on YouTube. And uh, a lot of fun to watch where he would go kind of to a location or maybe take a picture and um, like <laughs> he would have the camera, like the, the filmer out and about and it would be him uh, either walking through these different parts of the world and then him being back in the studio and him painting. And um, he had a very fast and loose approach just like um, a lot of the other people that we enjoy, uh, Bob Ross and Ron Ranson and all those fun people. So, uh, unfortunately, he, he passed away, but, you know, he definitely enjoyed painting and had a lot of fun and was definitely successful at it. So, obviously, check his stuff out if you never heard of him. That's, uh, Mr. Frankie Clark. So, while I was kind of, you know, talking about sad news um just building up the tonal values in the foreground one of the things we're gonna have to be wary of is the um the tonal values as things dry and lighten hammy's just knocking stuff around but whenever i use black in the wet and wet stage it is going to soften quite a bit and Sometimes it has a weird granularity to it. Not the pleasing, but kind of like a clumping granularity. So I'm expecting something blotchy to happen there. So I might actually lift a little bit of that black out. Because I know from just playing with it that it's not going to look like that when it dries. So there. Uh, none of these pigments are staining. So we can really play around and pull out some interesting highlights in the sky. We can refer to uh, Carlson's Guide to Landscape Painting with the fact that you can never paint a sky too light. And you can also refer to a quote from a Ron Ransom book, which is pretty much pulled from what I think is pulled from um, Carlson, is that uh, no values in the sky should really be or nothing on the land should really be lighter than the values in the sky since the the light is you know generated from the sky we did get some more, sort of weird um downward bleeding with the uh yellow ochre my table is pretty much flat but there's probably a slight degree, and maybe that's why that had fed in that angle. 
I'm grabbing the number one rigger to put some thoughts back in here. And I do want a really soft horizon, but I don't want it to be bam horizon, which is nice and soft, and then kapow uh, foreground, which is going to have detail. So I want to put a little something back here. And it'll soften with the wet and wet. One thing to note, Barnes & Noble had like a 50% sale on all the hardcover books, the board games, um, calendars, agendas, uh, planners, things like that. I don't usually buy hardcover books for like reading purposes unless they're art books. I did get a book on Art Nouveau, um, so I'm excited about that. I think... Um, Maybe we'll do like a little book review of that one day on the channel. Just, you know, show you a common book that's out there and see if you think it's worth picking up. But more importantly, I picked up a book that I never read. And it's about time that I do. And I think we'll actually have to do a book review on that. It's... Um, Walden by Henry David Thoreau and the reason I picked it up is that Thoreau the transcendentalist was a big influence on the tonalist landscape painters so he was writing at the time and I think they were referencing him or something and I think uh, Ralph Waldo Emerson was also at the time I'm really not up on my classics. Like I've never read Moby Dick, but I have read All Quiet on the, the Western Front. Um, so, like War and Peace, I've never read. I'm more of a reader with uh, fantasy novels or, you know, classic fiction, like Do Rob Robot's Dream of Electric Sheep, things like that, Isaac Asimov and them. Um, but that being said, you know, I saw Walden and I thought, you know, if he's, if that book and those writings are important to the tonalist, I should, should kind of see what it's all about. And growing up, and this is all kind of, you know, pertinent to painting. Uh, and that this information, um, just kind of scraping some ideas in. Growing up, I'm going to grab the number four and use it almost like a squirrel mop. Grab some raw umber while I blab. Every, like, standardized test at least in the northeast of the United States, would always have um, Robert Frost or some Robert Frost quote on it. It just always seemed to be what was happening and what was taking place in all the um, the tests or whatever that we had to do for English classes. Um, so I did see a book of Robert Frost's poems, I guess, or essays. Um, and I'm thinking maybe tomorrow heading out to uh, Barnes and Noble and picking that up as well. I, I'm assuming Robert Frost, the 1800s, so I have to check and see if he had any effects or influences on American painters. I want to leave a little bit of that background there and then kind of pop a little bit more right in front. Just got to remember that this is going to dry softer too, so just want to be prepared for that. Let's 
Let's bring this down into our water. Yellow ochre. And we'll be able to darken this up a little bit too. But uh, speaking of the tonalists and the the books and Barnes and Noble, after Barnes and Noble had stopped at a thrift store in Lafayette, um, I like to pick up the old uh, you know painting frames, things like that, um, or at least see what they what they have. And they had a big like huge framed um i guess it was a print on canvas and i immediately was like i'm pretty sure i know exactly who it is and when i walked up to it it had like a little plaque underneath it saying um g inez george inez which was funny that i was at bards and noble buying books thinking of the tone list thinking of george inez and then from there seeing uh, large prints like that in a, um, a thrift shop. It was very large and it was up for a hundred dollars. Uh, Hammy, I, I, I don't know what Hammy just knocked over. <laughs> uh, I'm grabbing some burnt umber. So this is just a little bit warmer. It's probably a little bit closer up. So I don't know Yes, a hundred dollars was good price. I, I didn't buy it. I'm debating it. I don't usually purchase art for myself, but um, lately I've been kind of you know thinking about it. Um, really, the only art that I've purchased for myself was some um, intaglio. Um, some prints that were of French origin from an antique shop, and I just really enjoyed it. And I was doing a lot of the, um, the etching and the printing and teaching myself that, so that's what kind of drew me there. I'm also trying to uh, pick up some work from a artist who's deceased from the area, and I'm just in talks with um, the artist stuff. Uh, family and the person in charge of the estate just because um you know there's some things that i would like to to own and have hanging up around my house you know i'm fortunate that you know people have purchased some of my art and enjoy hanging it up and having it around their house if i ever get a chance to add something to my collection from dennis sheehan or um, Ron Ranson or you know a lot of the people that I talk about that'll eventually happen one day but I always say how I rent a small two-bedroom house so <laughs> really don't have much room All right, I'm enjoying this one. I think the sky is quite interesting compared to the um, the background tree line and the mid-ground, the foreground. I'm not sure if it's like too much of a clear separation between the two. There is potential kind of lost and found edges back in here, but it is pretty um pretty drastic so i may rely on the classic tonalist mid-ground tree which um even though i say that i've been relying on it i've also been utilizing it just so i can eventually paint it correctly just just working on it working on it working on it where um, a lot of our paintings are just practice, 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 
and a lot of it is a similar scene over and over again. Um, and just a while ago, talking, uh, Joe Menza was saying that he did a scene three times. I don't know if he had done three times today or what, but um, you know, that kind of puts that idea there that you can explore um, a scene, a motif over and over again. There was, um, was it Charles Warren? A, a tonalist painter in the 1800s. I think he did oils, but he had, it was mainly watercolor. And he was, was it Charles Warren Eaton? And known as like the, uh, the pine tree painter. Cause always <laughs> had these rows of pine trees. I want to build that silhouette up against that sky. Some areas are still damp, which is fine. But I do want some tonal contrast within it, and I want it to be muted. I do feel like we're a lot of, um, a lot of just kind of strong earth values. I had uh, potentially thought about the phthalo, phthalo blue in the beginning. Kind of gives a nice, interesting muted green, but I avoided that. Um, also, I could have used ultramarine blue, uh, mixing it with the earth tones to get the different grays. So those might be be exploratory things in the future but this one i was just like all right let's just use lamp black so let's um i think what we can benefit from now is doing a dry off maybe a little bit of scraping see what could be pushed around little design elements I did get a little bit of longboarding in today, which was good. Uh, we're out of the freezing weather, the temperatures down here. We're back up into the 70s, so that didn't last long. But looking at the forecast, there's a lot of rain projected for the next week or two, so that's going to limit a lot of that outdoor longboarding time, but increase the painting time as well as the, the tea drinking. But we're still under boil water advisory. And um, I realize how much water I drink and go through. I use my electric kettle to boil the water and then I then add it to the Brita filter after it, draw, after it cools off. That's what I've been doing in the meanwhile. Because um, originally I was buying so much of the plastic water bottles years ago and just drinking bottled water, but I was going just through so much and my inclusion teacher called me out on all the plastic bottles I was going through so then I started refilling bottles and then started just doing the filter there we go that's interesting all right let's uh, do a pause and a dry off all right, so what I feared would happen, happened. Uh, we did get that softening taking place uh, quite a bit. And I really want to build up the 
tonal value of these landscape elements um, to get that silhouette against that background. Unfortunately, the filming takes up a lot of time on the, the phone and I hadn't deleted the previous videos that I had processed, so I only have like 12 minutes left. So what I'm gonna do is stop the video here. We're gonna put it into a two-parter, um, and that'll let me clear up space and um, approach the second part differently. In fact, I think I'm gonna save the second part for another day, like actually sitting down and painting. So we'll stop the video here. Um, I hope you enjoyed. Uh, this is our part one, and I'll be back with a part two. And uh, y'all take care. All right, talk to y'all soon and have fun. Bye.